Believe it or not, you don't need a mobile design system. Leveraging mobile optimized variants, mobile specific variants, and a responsive collection with jumper variables helps you avoid a separate design system for mobile devices. Let's take a closer look. And if you need help with your design system, check out the link in the description to come work with me and the team. Or come ask your question and join the community on UICollective.co. The most basic use case I see for mobile design systems and why you don't need one is a button. This is one I see all the time in working with design system clients is they'll have a, a button component. And these buttons are 18 by 10 in terms of horizontal and that vertical padding. What designers tend to do is make a copy of that component, call this your mobile button, shr slightly shrink the size 14 by eight. And then there you go. There's your mobile button. However, how do you know that as you're building out your designs that even on mobile, maybe you need a larger button in some places, you know, unless your, your app is static and you know exactly the type of sizes that you need, chances are you might have some varying sizes of buttons. You might have a larger button in a header navigation. You might have a smaller button on a card. Also too, if you need to make a change to this button, then suddenly you're making changes to two different component sets. And as your design system evolves, it's going to drive you absolutely crazy. So in terms of a mobile design system, you don't want to copy your components and have a mobile component set. Explore different sizes. That's why variants are there. So this is what I refer to as mobile optimized variants. Now, in the case of a button, they don't necessarily need to be mobile optimized because as I mentioned, you might have different sizes of buttons on your UI on mobile and on desktop as well. It depends on the brand. It depends on the UI that you're building. So the easiest solution here is just to add another variant that you're going to call size. So these here might be our default size, default, default. And then we can simply make a copy of these components here, call these maybe our small and now adjust the sizes. So 14 to eight. So instead of all of a sudden having a separate component group for our mobile design system, we're building in the components that we might need for mobile as variants. And that's gonna make things a whole lot easier when we're building out our UI, because instead of needing to swap an instance uh, for a completely separate component, we're simply just changing the variant. And another reason why you don't need a mobile specific design system is because we now have the addition of variables. Okay, we've had that for about a year and a half, two years, whatever the timeline is. So inside of your variables, you should be able to easily swap the mode so that your components, or at least the necessary components in your UIs are going to adjust dependent on the device size. So what do I have here is just really just this really basic, simple card, not the best looking card in the world, but it'll do for this example. So inside of our variables, you should have what you call, uh, let's go number variable, a responsive collection. Uh, and this is actually where we're going to house all of our variables that are going to see this card size adjust dependent on the size of the frame or dependent on the mode itself. So all of a sudden, instead of needing variants for you know uh, your cards, uh, some of the larger um, components, modals, uh, for all the different device sizes like desktop, tablet, and mobile, what you can actually do is you can bake the variables into the responsive collection to help that adjust. And let's take a look at that next. So inside of your responsive collection, you're going to, if you just start off, you're going to want to create individual modes for the device size of themselves. Uh, so we're going to call this device sizes, and we're going to start with our desktop. With our desktop, I like to do 1440, but if you're working on more larger like banking applications where everyone's always tending to use it on like a desktop, you can set that to 1920, whatever works uh, with your brand. Let's then go ahead and just, uh, oops, let me move that out of the way, uh, add in uh, the frame here to get a size for tablet that we want. So maybe for tablet, let's go uh, 1024. So let's add another mode. This will be our desktop mode. This is going to be our tablet mode. And then this here is going to be our mobile mode. And what this is going to do is it's going to keep things consistent in terms of the width, widths of um, frames that your designers are going to be designing on. Because again, if we look at right here in the side of our, of our frames, look at all the different sizes that we have for mobile. And in, in your Figma, it's best to keep that consistent. So you don't have some designers designing in a 402, some in a 440, or some in a 375. So I always like to work with the most recent iPhone, which I think is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Let's go for mobile. Let them go uh, 440. So oops, and this didn't adjust. So 1024 is the size I think that we set for tablets. 
Uh, yeah, we'll go 1024. Okay, so for desktop, we have 1440. Tablet, we have 1024. Then we have mobile, we have a 440. So what we're going to do is actually apply those at the frame level uh, themselves. Uh, but next, what we're going to do, let's look at um, actually getting into some of the spacing and how we build those responsive designs from desktop through to mobile, with, again, without needing a separate mobile design system. Okay, so also in our responsive collection is where we're also going to introduce sizes for our font and also for our line height so that these fonts are responsive based on the device size itself. So inside of our all variables, let's then go ahead and create uh, a new number variable that we're just going to call uh, our font uh, size and then starting with our H1. So H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. Um, in terms of building out your font scales or type scales, I'm not going to go through that right now. Uh, we do have a ton of resources on that and a ton of videos on that as well. So it's something I do recommend that you check out. But every single brand is going to have some type of edge text. So let's just go ahead and just populate this uh, to start. So maybe just have we have a 64, uh, we have a 48, oops, 64, 48, uh, 40, uh, 32, uh, 28, and then we have uh, a 24. Now for tablet, maybe you just want to shrink these down a bit. So maybe we'll start with the 48, but then go with a 40, but then go with the 32. So just uh, up that increments, 28. Then we'll go with a 24. And then maybe we'll go uh, with a 20 here. And then let's do the same going up. So maybe for mobile, we start with a 40. We then start with a, do, 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 a 32. We then go with a 28. And again, this isn't always best practice what I'm doing right here. Again, make sure there's a method to the madness behind building out your type scale. Um, and then we go with 24. And then we go with a 20. And then our H6 might also be uh, another 20 as well for a mobile. Anyway, so real simple type scale right there, right? So what we're then going to do is let's select um, the heading here from our pretty ugly uh, card. And let's go ahead and apply that variable for our H1. So then all of a sudden, if I, uh, that sets to mobile to start. So let's go, interesting. So set that to desktop. Let's then go ahead, set that uh, to mobile or what's going on here. Mobile, there we go. Then look what happens is all of a sudden that size adjusts. So as I drag that between frames here, so they got two floating around here. Uh, let's then go ahead, toggle that back to desktop and then switch that to mobile and just look what happens. That H tag adjusts. So it's an easy way of using our responsive collection to adjust the text sizes. Okay, but now what about spacing as well? And same with widths too. If you look at our spacing here, we have a horizontal padding of 96 and a vertical padding of 48. We're also going to want that to adjust as well. And that's where we actually introduce the concept uh, of jumper variables. So before you ever build out your jumper variables, I mean, these are the variables that's going to defy, define the widths and the spacing uh, or padding and also gap between a lot of your elements and of some of your larger components like cards is you need to go through your existing design and take note of what your existing padding gaps sizes look like. Uh, so that you can translate these into your responsive collection. So I'm using this landing page here from Untitled UI. Uh, again, one of the most popular Figma kits out there. You can buy their design system via the link in the description. And what's a couple things that we notice? So they have a horizontal padding of 128, 96. We have another 96 here. We have a 64 and a 96. We have another 64 and a 96. We also have a 32 and a 64, 64 and 96, 64 and 96. 96, another 96, another 32, and another 32. So they're using, uh, and Jordan who built the, he's using relatively the same padding gap spacing variables for all of their larger widgets to ma maintain that level of consistency. The same audit that we just did, you should be doing the same as well. Taking note whether your spacing and padding does have a particular grid that, that it follows, which it should, or all your spacing and padding and gaps inconsistent and don't necessarily follow a specific scale. If they don't, that's something you should probably look at at adjusting before you jump into your jumper variables. But now that we sort of have a good idea as to some of the padding and spacing that we're using in our design, let's look at how we can take this, take the values that we see here, like 128, 96, introduce the level of the concept of jumper variables to help these designs be responsive for mobile. 
So if you think you've already mastered design systems, what I'm about to show you right here is the most complex design system concept that you're ever going to work with. We worked recently with one design system client of the United States, Fortune 500 company, on their jumper variables based on the complexity of the brand. And again, it worked great at the end of the day because every single design was responsive, but it takes weeks in order to build out the variables in a way that they're pro properly uh, responsive. So what I've done is just from that untitled UI kit, as I've taken just one of their basic components, sorry, I got rid of our ugly card because it's probably gonna be a little bit easier to demo. So what we're going to do, so let's take stock of what this looks like. So we have a width of 560 and a gap of 48. And again, take an audit of your design system. You shouldn't be guessing what these values will be on mobile. Make sure it follows a specific scale and what your brand's already set. Okay, so what I'm about to show you uh, in terms of just guessing the number, not best practice, but uh, again, make sure you follow a specific scale. Take note of what's already, what number is already in your existing design. Um, anyways, enough of me rambling. So what I'm then going to go ahead and do here is uh, let's go into our all variables. Now let's create our jumper variables. So we're going to call these our jumpers and we're going to start off with our 560. Now in past lessons, what I've done is actually given these a name, like a 3XL, a 2XL. But I got feedback from a lot of designers and a couple of clients as well. Sometimes that can be a little bit confusing to remember what is what. So if this year on desktop is 560, so I want to set that on desktop to 560. And then let's say on tablet, we want to go that to maybe like 420. And then uh, on mobile, maybe we want to go to like a 320 or 440 and then a 320. So it goes down about 120 each time. So what we're then going to go ahead and do is let's apply that variable. So we're going to then apply that variable of 560. And one thing I didn't do is I didn't apply the name. So this is going to go from 560 to 320. So I'm defining in the name of the variable, the width on desktop and the width on mobile. So then when I'm building out the components and applying those widths, I'm going to know that on mobile, it's going to shrink down to a 320 and on desktop, that's going to be a 560. Now, you don't need to lock yourself into these specific values either. You can also have a 560 to 440. Right. So on tablet is 440 and then maybe on mobile, it's also on 440 or on debt on tablet is also a 560. So you can modify the names here based on what the value is on desktop versus what the value is on mobile. And what this means is you can have a ton and ton of different uh, combinations here where it can get pretty complex. So personally, I do think it's fine in this case, if you really need to, to group these by components. So we're gonna call these card. Right now, uh, one thing we're gonna get into uh, next is you don't need jumper variables for every component. So be sure to keep that uh, in mind. So in the case that we have right here, uh, if this is set to 560, this here is our desktop. Then if I change that to mobile, look what happens to the width. Is it then goes to a 320. And then if I change this out from 560 to 440, notice how it gets a little bit larger. So that width grows to the 440. So by having jumper variables, I know exactly what the width is will be on desktop, what the width will be on mobile, and it will allow me to adjust accordingly. Now this concept here doesn't just work for width, but it also works for things like your padding and your gap as well. So in the case of our padding here, so we see it set to 48. Uh, and that's going to be also the same uh, on desktop as well. So that, that gap doesn't change on 48. So maybe on mobile, sorry, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Maybe I move this out of the way. Sorry, way too many frames happening. Uh, so maybe on mobile, I want the spacing to be a little bit less. What I can then do uh, is introduce the idea uh, of gap variable. So in this case, this would be 48, maybe, I'm oh, sorry. So you can see that 32 and then maybe on mobile, I want to set that uh, to 28 accordingly. So and then this will be a uh, 48 to a 28, 48 uh, to 28. There we go. So then if I select the component and I'm going to detach the initial um, apply the variable and the, where's our jump over variable. So our 48 to our 28 and notice how that when I did that, uh, the, the gap shrunk down. So going from mobile to desktop, uh, the gap increases. And then when I go uh, to mobile, that decreases as well. So again, your jumper variables aren't just for things like your width. They're also for things like your padding uh, and your gap.
So before we wrap up, it's really important not to overcomplicate your jumper variables. So if you have two fields here, you know, maybe you're building a form. So set that to 24 and then this to 24. You don't need to apply jumper variables to all of your instances of a component. You don't need to apply jumper variables or width variables to every component themselves. Try to keep it at the parent level because if you're frame in this case, so if I set this background to white, uh, if these frames here, these components or instances of these components are set to fill, they're going to be reactive to the width of the frame. So you wouldn't necessarily need to worry about applying jumper variables to absolutely everything. That's a mistake that I do see a lot of designers making when they're working with their jumper variables. Uh, so just be sure you're not over complicating your jumper variables and trying to reduce the number that you have at any one time. But all that said though, there is a specific use case where you do need specific variants that are actually only used on mobile. Now, most common example I see all the time, header navigation. So with your header navigation, everyone's used the same website on desktop as they have on mobile. You know, the website that you have is a completely different navigation on desktop mobile. Sure, it uses the same navigation links, but the design is totally different. That's when it's super important to actually call out which variants are for desktop and which variants are for mobile. So you need to take stock of your design system, go through component by component, and where is there more of a severe difference in experience on desktop than mobile? And like the case with buttons, that's not the case because you're simply just changing the size and the experience and the look of those buttons isn't going to change. But with something like a header navigation, you actually are going to need to introduce a mobile optimized variant for this. So let's now look at an example as to how we would take this header navigation and translate that onto mobile. So let's then give ourselves some space here and let's simply copy this navigation. So here, what we're going to do in our property one our default, we can call this our desktop. And then here we can be specific as to our mobile optimized variants. Because again, the experience is going to be way different between desktop and mobile. Then we can proceed forwards in order to adjust this. So uh, let's go ahead, maybe stack these items. Uh, let's stack these items as well. Let's maybe give ourselves a little bit of a fill, uh, adjust the padding accordingly. Maybe give it a little more space. There's a 24 uh, by 48. Uh, let's now uh, shrink this down. Let's set this to, uh, to hug and also set uh, this to hug right here. Um, and depending on the size of like your of the device that you're building for, you can set this to fixed as well. Uh, if you'd like, let's then set this uh, to vertical. Maybe we'll set this to fix. Just give ourselves a little bit of space. Set this to fill. Set in these individuals uh, to fill as well. Maybe give ourselves a little bit of room. Set that to the middle. And then there we go. There we have what we might refer to as a mobile optimized variant. So hopefully now you see the difference between just using your variances, using your variants for different sizes that could be used on desktop and mobile and not specific to mobile versus actually needing to define the components where that experience is so different on mobile that it does actually require a different variant unique for mobile alone.